All right, news out of the bluff that's a couple days old but is still kind of stinging around town. Eric Dooley fired as Southern football's head coach after not even two seasons, not even two full complete seasons, and Dooley gets the boot two weeks ahead of the Bayou Classic, and who better to bring in and talk about it than the expert on Southern football for us here at Channel 9, Kevin Batiste. I'm John Eads. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. Check out other Game Time episodes. Kev, um, as I said, getting closer to the Bayou Classic, and I know the team has been really up and down, mostly down lately. Did you see this coming, though? Yes and no. No, because he still had two years left on his contract. And I know in the college football world, you know, it, it doesn't slow down and, you know, buyouts happen, but, you know, you know Southern, <laughs> Southern is not Texas A&M. You know all these other big schools. So you think, okay, he got two more year, two more years left. He made the SWAC championship, even though he backdoored. They got there two more years. Maybe they talk it out, make some adjustments, and maybe they'll give him one more. But yes, because of the actual product on the field. I mean, he is not just the head coach, but he's the offensive play caller, and the offense wasn't good. I'm just calling it like it is. And then coming off of last year, after losing the SWAC championship the way they did not just getting blasted by Jackson State, but his, his mishandling of the quarterback situation, not playing Bubba McDaniel. And then you come in, first game of the season, you only put up 10 points against Alabama State, you lose. You mm. get blown out by Jackson State in front of a sold-out crowd on the bluff, and then you, you, you don't win a big game. They, I, I don't even know what Southern's biggest or most quality win is this season, if you, if you think about it. I mean, I, Arkansas Pine Bluff? Texas Southern, a game that they probably should have ended up, <laughs> ended up losing until Texas Southern yeah. dropped the ball. So the product on the field, you got fans hooping and hollering, rightfully so, you know, just really not buying into the program right now, what Dooley's putting out. So, I mean, I'm not really, not really shocked in, in the grand scheme of things. Yeah, and you would know, I mean, because it's easy to look at the wins and losses and, hey, the offense is scoring this amount of points in the season versus this, right? But you've seen specific moments last year, the SWAC championship with the quarterback mishandling, and this year in the game against uh, FAMU, was Florida, it, right? Florida, when they that. needed to come back mm -hmm. and go on a drive to tie that game or maybe win it, and the game management was just bad. Yeah, that that is the first game that sticks out into my mind because you no, know, that was that was at that point that was the game to really show okay Southern is here to play. They, at that time, Southern and FAMU were the top two teams in the SWAC, and as you mentioned, the situation Southern was down seven points, having to drive two and a half minutes to tie the game, starting on their own twenty-five. And his first play out the gun is a run play, mm -hmm. and then later in the drive he runs another run play, and later in the drive he runs another run play. Um, I mean, uh, unless you got Barry Sanders and and. Earl hey, Campbell. Kendrick and, and Rhymes pretty darn good. I he, say. He's good. Unless, <laughs> unless, you, unless you got the Great Wall of Dallas or all these great offensive lines, you still don't run the ball in that situation. And, you know, fans were hooping and hollering. And then after the game, and once again on the following Tuesday, Dooley said the reason he did that was because they were dropping back eight in the coverage. And the film showed otherwise. And for, for him to stand 10 toes down on that decision really shows that he is, you know, very, a little, a little pompous. To be quite honest, really, you know, it, it's my way or the highway. I'm going to stand 10 toes down. I'm the head coach. Y'all follow my lead. And I've never shared this about the Tuesday after that game because, like I said, Dooley said it. He said those words Saturday after the game and then the following Tuesday. After he said that Tuesday, Chandler Whitfield, one of Southern's receivers, he had a muff punt in that game against FAMU. Ended up, you know, FAMU scored points off of it. It's one of the reasons they lost. One of the things that Chandler Whitfield said, this is a student, a player, he says, you know, one thing I got to do is, you know, you know we all got to be better, you know, me, you know, me, myself specifically, I got to catch the point. I got to make sure that I don't put my team in, in situations like that, make sure that we have our best chance to win. And I'm thinking, I'm like, how does a kid take accountability in the head coach? Yeah. And, and, and that, that really stuck out with me throughout the rest of the season. Yeah, I mean, you understand coaches wanting to, you know, stick with their decisions and you know, be confident and stuff like that, and you know, you see that all the time. But when people watch the film, and Coach even has a chance to watch the film, right? Mm -hmm. um, and he sees that maybe he thought differently. There's nothing wrong with taking accountability and saying, "Hey, that's right. on me," right? right? But he didn't take those opportunities repetitively. It seems. Yeah, and, and that's one thing that uh, Athletic Director Roman Banks mentioned in uh, yesterday's uh, press conference, which I, I didn't expect him to be you know, that transparent on, on the issues. But he said, you know, you know, one of the things was, you know. 
Dooley didn't really have a, a clear you know, vision of the game plan. You know, whenever, you know, one way that you communicate with your fan base, you know, you, you don't com communicate with them directly a lot. One, the way that you communicate is by your product on the field mm -hmm. and what you say throughout the week. Mm -hmm. And if you're not giving them a good product and you're saying the wrong things and you're not being able to step up to the podium and say, yeah, guys, this one is on me. I take full responsibility. We, we, we're switching up some things. You're saying, no, every, you know, everything's all right. I did this because I felt it. No one's going to trust you. No one's going to trust you. And it's very hard to get fans to buy into that with a whole new season and future coming and to get them to buy season tickets and continue to watch the program. That's the hard thing, right? Because we're seeing it a lot now. Zach Arnett, Mississippi State, mm -hmm. and uh, Brian Harson at Auburn. Coaches are getting the plug pulled on them quickly in one, two, three years. You don't have five and six like maybe some others do, or right. it's kind of how it operated in the past. So you have to make a decision sometimes. Hey, this is where we're going. I don't think that's the way we want to go. We got to cut it and go a different direction. So you think this was the right decision? You think this will pay dividends now and then in the near I, future? I, I think it was the right decision. Like that, to me, the only roadblock was, I mean, the, the money. I mean, I, I don't know what, what the buyout is. I mean, they still got to discuss the buyout, but Dooley still has about 620000 left in base salary in the last two years. It's not $76 million, not $76 but million. it's still a decent <laughs> amount of change. Yeah, shout out Jimbo Fisher failing upwards. Woo! <laughs> yeah, everybody ain't able, but uh, like that was only the real roadblock to me. Other than that, I mean, I think it, it, was, it was the right time, right decision. The last thing you want, if everybody's fed up with him, the last thing you want is for him to win the Bayou Classic. Not just win it, but in a good fashion, and then you start feeling some sorrow, like, okay, he won – he got to win. He'd be our biggest rival. Maybe we give him another year. Yeah. No, just just cut ties right now, move on, and see what you can bring in with the early signing period coming up. And as you said, the college football world does not stop. That's a tough little uh, gray area there. Now you got to put that recruiting class together with a new coach and find that new coach and the coaching staff. Uh, so the program here, I want to know about the caliber of this job. And one thing you said is that Dooley would win the games maybe he was supposed to win, but not the ones perhaps he wasn't supposed to against Florida A&M, against Jackson State. So is this a program that expects to not only win a decent amount of games, but also win those big games typically? Oh, absolutely. This is a, pro this is a program that expects to be in the select championship every year. When we're talking about a program, you know, you're talking about, you know, Ace Mumford, you know, Pete Richardson. I mean, Southern was the team of the 90s and then had success – again in the 2000s and, then, and their last championship is 2013. I mean, these people expect winning football. I mean, the Southern people, they're one of the most passionate fan bases, not just in the SWAC, not just in the HBCU, but throughout the entire landscape of college football. I mean, people, people plan out their weekends, their fall plans around the bluff, Southern football, <laughs> tailgating and all that stuff. So yeah, this is definitely one of the more, one of the more, how can I put this up? The jobs to look forward to coming up this year in the landscape of not just swag, but college football. I don't know about any other coaching openings in the FCS, but you'd think that this is one of the most coveted, one of the most sought after for, for people that are looking for maybe a step up. Yeah, I would think so. I mean, the, the downfall, I mean, is, you know, people, you know, you, you look down on, on, on the swag and all that because it doesn't, it doesn't have the resources. It doesn't have... You know the, the talent of you know the, the SECs and the Power Fives course, and, yeah. and, and all that good stuff. A lot of you know the SWAC coaches are people who who came up in the SWAC, P people who are already aware of the situation. Eric Dooley, I mean, before Southern, he was at Grambling, UAPB, Prairie View, Alcorn, Fred McNair. I mean, he came up at Alcorn. Mm -hmm. TC Taylor, coach at Jackson State, he's at Jackson State now. So that, that's it's, it's kind of like you know already have roots when it comes to coaching in, in the SWAC. But one thing that Roman Banks said was, you know, they, they are considering all options. It doesn't have to be someone okay. who is just tied to Southern, someone who is just tied to the SWAC, someone who is just tied to HBCUs. He's considering all options for this job. All right. Rightfully so. I know you've been on social media a little bit the past couple of days posting things. Make sure to go follow him. Uh, what's your handle? At K. Jr. All right, there you go. Um, and also hearing other people kind of talk about the situation with the coaching. Any names being floated around or candidates at this point? I know it's very early. Uh, but. Yeah, very early. Uh, Banks did not get into that much yesterday. I mean, he said he, he said he has a pool of candidates that he's interested in, but he didn't really hey, give us a timetable. And that his, his focus is on the Bayou Classic next week and, and okay. make sure the players and coaches have their support. But as far as names, uh, to me, the most obvious one, Chinnisberry. Chinnisberry, 
who is the current head coach at uh, Benedict College, Division II school in the uh, in the uh, Southeastern Intercollegiate Intercollegiate College, Division II. Okay. Uh, yeah, he used to be a offensive coordinator at Southern mm. under former head coach Dawson Odoms. Okay. So about I think about six, seven years. And one thing about Southern's offense during that time, they were ground and pound. You knew they was gonna run behind their offensive line, stable of running backs, and they were going to punch you in the mouth, running the football for 60 minutes. And you know, having someone who understands that brand of football, the expectations, and I guess just the overall culture, that's the first name that sticks out in my mind. Now, the other thing is, like Southern is not gonna be the only job opening this offseason. Right. You got yeah. you know South Carolina State, right, okay. there, right there close to Benedict. Uh, Maybe the Texas Southern job might come open. As, you know, th there's going to be a plethora of jobs. So yeah. he, he is the first name that comes to mind, Chinnis Berry. Other than that, John, uh, I, ain't, I ain't got many options. I mean, Ed Reed, people keep bringing up Ed Reed because for, for a minute he was the coach. He at, was. He was the coach <laughs> at Bethune-Cookman, but some bridges got burnt in that process. I, I don't know how just not just the SWAC and the HBCU you know, folks would, would think about that. I don't know, but um, – We'll see. That's all I say. We'll see. That would shake things up. I guess the benefit is that you made this decision early before pretty much everybody else, it seems. Mm -hmm. So you can kind of get a jump on interviews and candidates before. Um, at, at, you know, it's better than making a decision, say, in February or March. Right. Or even January, because then right. you're behind the eight ball and some of the top candidates have already been talked to by other schools and stuff like that. So hey, that's the upside of this, I'd say. Uh, anything I haven't asked regarding the situation you want to add? Anything like that? I guess the, the main thing is that they got one more game left. Right. One more, one more game left. The granddaddy of them all, as they say. I mean, one, one of the biggest robberies in, in the nation. And uh, it, it's, a, it's a, a full 180 for the guy stepping in this situation for Southern. Their interim head coach, Terrence Graves. 2021, same situation, Grambling. They fired their head coach, Broderick Fobbs, two weeks before the Bayou Classic. And Graves had to step into this situation. And he, at Grambling? At Grambling. Oh, interesting. At okay. Grambling. And Grambling ended up winning this game. Oh. They, they won that game that year. Two years later, now he's in the same situation. Stepping <laughs> in, That's so ste funny. Stepping in as an interim for Southern in the 50th annual Bayou Classic. And not just Graves. You know, Sean Wallace, safety's coach, he battling stage four pancreatic cancer. He's serving as the acting head coach. Cool. And one thing about Graves and Wallace, they talked yesterday. They seem ready for the moment. I mean, even though – They've never been permanent head coaches. They seem ready. They they have they talked to the team, told them to keep their energy up. You know, one of Wallace's message, messages was, you know, life is, is unfair. You know, we can't control what happens in life. But it's all about how do you respond, how do you push forward. How will you continue to push forward in a situation now that the head coach is gone, but you still have something to play for. And, and, and it's not a swag championship because they can't go to the swag championship, but you're still playing for – pride you're yeah. playing for alums you're playing for fans you're playing for you're playing for your school i mean this is <laughs> grambling the southern man this is a game that a lot of people have something on the line so th there is still a lot to play for in this game next week it's also on national tv so nbc that doesn't hurt per, per right? usual lots NBC. to play for interesting and i've seen in college football especially when there's a coaching change a coordinator fired or a coach fired a head coach the team plays well for whatever reason. The yeah. next, I don't understand why that happens, but if you're a betting person, usually uh, if you put money on the team that just lost a coach or something like that, they always tend to play well that next week. So maybe we'll see that with Southern here. Yeah, I mean, hey, the Raiders, they fired their head coach now yeah. two-game yeah. win streak. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. Maybe A&M uh, this week. Who knows? Yeah. So, all right, we got a bit of a coaching carousel here in town over at Southern. Eric Dooley out. Who's in? I guess we'll find out. Later, but uh, you got the Bayou Classic to look forward to in a couple weeks here, and it should be a great time. Again, be sure to follow Kevin. He'll have coverage of that game in Southern all off season. Whoever ends up getting that coaching gig, he'll have it, and all the coverage will be on WFB as well. Yes, so, sir. Thanks for stopping by, Kevin. Much appreciated. No problem. It's what we do. All right, be sure to like and subscribe, folks. And again, now tune into our newscasts every day of the week for the sports blocks, where we'll have coverage of Southern football, LSU, the Saints, all the local teams. Thanks for watching.